Shalom Rastafari, and this should be what the fifth or the, the sixth portion of this particular 40th Torah portion. And we want to look at um, the so called pimp. Now, if you check out one of our older vids, we went into the etymology of pimp according to the English language. We went into the etymology, not the connotation. Not what we can call pimp or what pimp may be nowadays so much, but what the root word, etymology of the word pimp is. And it says pimp, basically, pimpernickel, pimpernil, a weak man. Pimp is defined according to the English language. Now, folks will say, well, it's, I don't care about that. It's whatever I want to say it is. You can play with yourself if you want to. But there's a reality, you know, there's a certain embedding in the language, you understand, because remember, it was here before you were here, you understand, and there's the whole matrix, you understand, in other words, there's the whole matter behind the matter. All right, so we're beginning off with Rich Negro. This is Rich Negro right here, and I thought it was interesting just to, you know, profile some of the elements and points, because sometimes when we're lecturing on this, we have to touch on many points simultaneously, you understand, in order to paint, as it were, to paint the big or the bigger picture. So let's put this over here on the side. Let's put um, the rich Negro pimp right over here. This is magic wand, magic wand. So we ask the question, is the pimp, right, is the P-I-M-P, is the pimp, uh, a type of uh, Balaam, or is he a type of Baal? He's a type of Baal. This is a type of Baal. Now, remember how we pointed out that the that Balaam, in a sense, is a is a is a type of um, Balaamism, the sin of Balaam and Balaam, and the doctrine or the teaching of Balaam how it relates in the revelation of prophecy in the scripture in this dispensation, this latter day and time, to the so-called um, preacher and pastor of the counterfeit doctrine, of the counterfeit teaching of the other Christ. You will know, the anti-Christ instead of Christ, instead of what the word and the spirit of truth will reveal to us and reveals to us that that's the false gospel. Now, we dealt with the scriptural verses in this many scriptural verses. Now, the eye of the storm is this particular people right here. Let us bring up this pic right here. Let us select some of these pictures here so we can um, better um, explicate this particular. Okay, here we have the so-called uh, Negro, the so-called Negro, the Hebrew and the so-called Negro, right? Hebrew or so-called Negro. So which is it? Is it the Hebrew or the so-called um, Negro? Now, most folks would think, well, yeah, they say that we are, we are Negroes, blacks, and colored. And this is why we've had to touch on that particular topic matter. And we're touching on some of these topic matters just to kind of give one's hints and give one's kind of the guidance. And it's really um, dependent upon one to do their own work, you know, and to study. You'll tend to follow up on these things. Because once follow up, you know, you have to get in, informed. You have to get the right information. You have, you have to be informed. You've got to get the facts about it and do the math and see what it adds up to. And then you can choose, you know, you, you, know, you make your choice. But for I and I, we seek to make our wills obedient to good influences, not to do whatever we will. Because we've already seen 40 years of this doing whatever one's Will and and we're in the 40th portion, the 40th Torah portion. Kind of very interesting. This 40th Torah portion, and here we get to the um, sin of of uh, of Balaam. You understand the sin of the, the the sin of Baal Peor. And in this, we, we we're studying what is Balaam. So we have to distinguish Balaam, Balaam. And let's see see if we can do this right here. Let's check out some of these picks right here. See if we're going to use anything else um, from these pics that we have here, because it's a picture paints a thousand, a thousand words, right? So let us let us do another search right here, and let us get um, the old uh, Negro preacher. Let's get a let's get a preacher or a pastor. Maybe 
is probably filed under pastor. Let's see what we have here, and we'll check out some of the photos because it's very important for you to distinguish between um, between the uh, bail, what bail is, and in the in the other portion we touch briefly on bail, and you can you know do a wiki you know a wiki search, do a wiki search on it. So right now we're going to touch on the pimp. Is the pimp a type of bail? Bail? Is is this modern so-called pimp and, and, and the profession of, of pimping? Since pimping has become a profession, isn't it just ironic and interesting? And see, this is not condemning. We, we are not condemning. Yes, we are judging. Josh says, and Yeshua says, if you could read the word in its purity, he doesn't say do not judge. He says do not condemn. You know what I'm saying? It's not for I and I to condemn, but you have to be able to weigh things for yourself. See, that's why folks are lost in so-called translation, or, or they're lost, in other words, in, in mistranslation. Our so-called modern-day pimp, and once again, we advise ones to look it up for yourself. Take a note of this, and when you get a chance, look at the etymology. Not just the definition, but look at the etymology. All right, let's look at the etymology of the word. You really need to look at the etymology of the word. In other words, how did the word come about? What is its linguistic roots? In the beginning was the what? Word. And the word was what? It was with God, and it was God. So we want you to be able to distinguish between, now, of course, there are good preachers, you know, as faithful preachers, and there are, faithful pastors, no doubt. We we don't doubt that. You see, that's not really the problem. You know what I'm saying? The problem is the counterfeit gospel. The the problem is, is that there are too many prophets of Baal. You know what I'm saying? There's too many prophets of Baal, you know, as those who have bailed out on our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach. You know what I'm saying? There's too much, there's too many of those. You know what I'm saying? So let, we don't find the picture right here. Maybe let's just go to Creflo. Creflo is interesting, too. Creflo. I know he's been in the news recently, Creflo Dollar. But it's interesting because we saw a couple of his recent ones, and he's up there saying, I have neglected to teach you this for all these years, and so forth and so on. Now I'm going to teach you the real stuff. I don't know. He seems to be going through some something. I don't know if he's... If he's if he's trying to make his way right, if he's like Blam, you know, because some of them some of them the eyes are opening up, no doubt, you know, and you're gonna hear some of them, you know, saying preach something a little different than what a lot of them have been preaching, and some of them are gonna be acknowledging, you know, saying the truth. We don't know how many because it's up to each of them to choose. You see, that's 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 what Jah has given them. The Almighty has given them a free will to choose. So we have Baal. Bail, right? Bail. So the modern pimp, especially for us as the once lost but now found beta Israel, that's why this particular, as you say, story, you know what I'm saying, is our story. We talk about our history. Our, we've had our history in front of our, us for so long. We've had the Bible right there in front of us for so long, but we didn't have a true, or we had very few true preachers and pastors of the word who would communicate the word straightly, directly, you understand, irrespective of if it makes some people feel uncomfortable. You see, when you speak the truth, it's going to make one feel, people feel uncomfortable. In fact, if you speak the truth, it might make you feel uncomfortable. Then after you speak it, you got to check yourself. You understand, but what most folks do is they burn out their conscience. You understand, and instead of being sorrowful towards repentance. You know what I'm saying? That's an opportunity right there. So let's touch on bail. Now, of course, um, a, fuller, a fuller aspect of this would be found in the kings, in the books of the kings, um, especially concerning Elijah and Jezebel. You know what I'm saying? Jezebel. But we have to understand what is the relationship. You know what I'm saying? First of all, what do these names mean? When we come across these names in our Torah studies, or you come across names in the Bible, for example, Jesus in the Bible. It says that he shall what? Save his people from their sins. So in his name is Savior. So it's not just, 
you know, just saying a name, Yeshua, you know what I'm saying? But knowing what the meaning of the name is, as the scriptures say, to give praise, we are to give praise, but to give praise with overstanding, to give praise with overstanding. That is what is required of us. The overstanding required of us because we must worship him in spirit, all right, in spirit and in truth. I'm trying to find... Trying to find some, maybe I should have gone on the church and black church or something like that. Some of these, um, some of these picks that we have right here. But let's just go on with the pimp for right now. But I wanted to use a visual, a visual kind of image so you can see on one side the so-called pimp. You understand the so-called pimp, biblically speaking, a prophet of Baal. You understand? It's for the, it's for, it's for Baal. Baal, Baal, you know, ballers, that's why they call themselves ballers. You, you ever wonder why they say you're going to be a baller? You know what I'm saying? You're going to be a baller. But think about it. This is not how we have been as a people. This is not really truly in accordance with our God-given nature. Something has gone on. Somehow the people have been corrupted, even if we look over 40 years. You know what I'm saying? Somehow the people have been corrupted. So where did this happen? In particular, when you look at the present state of um, so-called black America, and we've been mentioning this, um, you know, this particular, or oh, this this will be a good picture right here. We'll, we'll use this as a placeholder right here. This will be a good picture right here to utilize. It'll be an effective picture, hopefully, just to kind of paint the picture. You know what I'm saying? Paint the picture right here. Paint the picture so so you can see more of the fullness of this right here. Okay, so we have uh, move this out. Okay, how we do that? Let's put it right here so you can see the whole picture here. All right, so we have almost everything in frame right there, just about. Right? We have the Beta Israel because you have to identify in order for you to know the truth of the scripture, know the truth of this word. You have to be, it's like a mystery. You know, reading the Bible and understanding what's going on, it's almost like a mystery. You know, and you, you, you get to know a part of it, and that helps you now figure out the next part, and, and, and you lead to the next, the next sign or the next evidence. You follow the evidence. You know, we're, saying you, we're not editing, seeking to edit this. You know what I'm saying? In the sense of editing out the evidence, but we're seeking to follow the evidence where the evidence leads. So we have the prophet of Baal right here. Notice what he's holding up. He's holding up a cross. How interesting. You would think that the preacher and the pastor would say, hey, that's the cross of, of Jesus. You can't do that. You know what I'm saying? But nobody ever says that. Interesting. How very interesting. But so be it. You know what I'm saying? Um, the bling bling, everything else like that, you know, outlandish clothing, Yovas. Now we have here, we have uh, Caesar Bogiers, Caesar Bogiers, or the so called um, whitewash uh, Gentile, the European foreign national Jesus. You know, saying this is the European foreign national Jesus. But we know that this is a really historical figure. This is a historical figure named. Cesare Cesare Borgia, or Cesare Borgia of the Borgia family. He was the, the son of Pope Alexander VI. You understand? They have nothing to do with the Christ or the Moshiach of the Bible, of the Scripture. All right? Um, now we have right here the skull or death. You understand? Choose this day who you will serve. You understand? And this is symbolic of the, the counterfeit pastors and preachers. In a sense, this is this is Balaam. This this is symbolic of Balaam. So the preacher, the counterfeit preacher, is symbolic of Balaam. All right, and your pimp and the pimp mentality. Mm hmm. In other words, the pimp immorality. Now a lot of folks will see this and they'll they'll try to justify this. You know, they'll try to justify this. They'll try to say, well, you have to know that because of this or because of that or poverty or the next thing, so forth and so on, as though to give a license to it. That is all being the devil's advocate. Now, who are the worshipers down here? Notice these worshipers down here. You understand? The black woman. You understand? Or the deceived Eve. 
This is the deceived Eve right here. This is our deceived black sisters, mothers, daughters, and wives right here. You understand? Now, understand this kind of relationship. This was a good picture right here from, um, I think, the black church or, or the church of the black man. I think that was a brother's site. Now, this is who the Bible's talking about, right? The Hebrew or the so-called the so-called Negro. The Hebrew or the so-called Negro. Now, Negro, of course, Niger. We have Simon, you know, in the Bible who's called Niger or Nigger. So we have Niger or Nigger in the Bible. We have places in Africa called Niger and Nigeria. I think you already know that. And, of course, the relation is to the so-called black people. But this is a foreign appellation. This is a foreign name. This is a name that has been imposed from without to rob us of who we are and to put us in a state of doubt. And this is the present when we're talking about the 40-year curse. It's a 40-year curse. When we compare ourselves to the type of people black people were 40 years ago, we're speaking about morality. We're speaking about the love, the family. How was all of this destroyed in four, just about virtually destroyed in 40 years? We have to get beyond just pointing fingers at the individuals and recognize, just like they do in science, that there must be some foreign element. Some element must have been introduced to reduce the morality, you know what I'm saying, the morality of the black people. And this is where the whole connection with this 40 Torah, 40th Torah portion, known as Balak, comes in and 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 I know I've spoken on this before and I I've tried to articulate it in some of the the, the first videos we ever put out you always know, said about the bling bling hip hop and the bling bling then we touched on um on the duat or the underworld the book of the dead in a sense and what's going on and where these people are and then as we started to follow more of the the, the Torah studies, it began to clear up a lot of things. Like I said before, that ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. You know what I'm saying? There's a freeness in learning these things. Now, it all depends if you still want to hold on to the error. You have to recognize some still desire to hold on to the error, and some are very heavily burdened. You know, different people, different individuals have been affected in different ways. But the solution, you know what I'm saying, the solution, the healing is our Lord and Savior, our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach and his word. And that repentance is that initiation of that new life, being born again. In other words, becoming sons and daughters. See, when we become sons and daughters, guess what? We can become brothers and sisters. But that vibe of brother and sisterliness, even amongst this lost sheep, after all of these years, when we look at black history in America, there was, there was more love, even in worse situations, when, 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 when black folks had less bling-bling and money and so-called ownership in this Balaam, Balaam society, this ownership society. So where has the love gone? Where has the, because the love has been transferred, you'll send, for, for a true spiritual a, a true kind of a Gnostic or a esoteric love within, you know what I'm saying, of, of, of Christ and God and the Word and that practice without, and it has been transferred to money. It has been transferred to the love of money. And we're not saying money is evil. Don't be foolish and don't blaspheme the Word. We're not saying money is evil, but the love of money, you know what I'm saying, is the root of all evil. And how ironic on the one dollar, on the $1 bill, it says, in God we trust. And so that $1 bill to the lost, to the lost sheep and the lost people and people who get, who get deceived by Diablos and Satan, that dollar, in a sense, becomes the symbol of love, the symbol of worship, that which has great value and great worth, especially with the lost sheep or the lost people. All right, the Beta Israel. So let's go into um, Baal for a moment. Baal, Baal, all right? Baal and the pimp. So the modern pimp, you understand the connection of the modern pimp, but we can't leave out Balaam, Belial. Remember, he rode the donkey. 
so look at the democratic or the, the old democracy connection. I was going to say this to ones and ones if, you know, if we were political and into the politics for a level, right? And those who might say, well, they prefer Rom, I mean, Obama to Romney. We don't know what Romney's care is like, but some say it's all the same thing. But, you know, we're not getting involved in, in, in really that. We're trying to understand the bigger picture. But say you're a Republican. You understand? If you really knew what you, what you should know, you understand? You should say you're Republican and you still vote for, you know, if you want to vote for Obama, you could say you're Republican. That'll be that. That'll be a perfect spin right there. See, because it's a republic that we stand, not the democracy that we stand. You have to understand those differences right there. But others have gone into more detail and teaching on those particular nuances. We're not going to regurgitate right now on that aspect, but you have to understand the difference between so-called the republic, you understand, and so-called democracy. You understand, and it was under the Republican Party originally that so-called black people were emancipated or made over as property, but it's interesting how they all went to the donkey or the Democrat roughly 40 years ago roughly 40 years ago. So we're still within that prophetic um, dispensation of time. So let's get into Baal or Baal. What does Baal or Baal mean? Baal or Baal means Lord, Master, Lord, Lordy, Lordy, oh, Lordy, Lordy. Right? And that's what they call him, Lord. They call him Lord. They don't call him Master. You understand? They call, because then it'll be obvious. Because how could they call so-called Jesus Master? Because then they might look up here and see, you, you over this, because Lord come from the old world, England, you know, but the but the 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 slave owning, rich white male land owning gentry, they were lords, they were like lords, but they used the other form of the word lord, and that basically is master. But all of this is in reference to Baal, to Baal, you over the so called Canaanitish uh, deity. It means possessor. One who possesses something. Remember, it was only one who was 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 rich or wealthy or had possessions and were were, were European, generally speaking. You understand? Who were these lords, masters, possessors? They were owners. It also means owner. You understand? And notice how Baal. You know, notice how this type, pimp type, is also a kind of a master and a lord. He has slaves and servants in that same kind of relationship. You understand how, how it so, so, so um, accurately links with it. It means guardian, a husband, a husband or a husbandman. The word husband basically means house bond, the house bond, what holds the house together. You understand according to the mechanics of the language and principle, the house bond or the husband, the husband, like the husband man in Christ's parables in the Bible, the husband man. Um, when you go a little bit deeper in the word Baal or Baal, it means Jove. Now, Jove is interesting because Jove is the Roman god, but it appears almost like a contraction of, of Jave or Yahweh. Yahweh, like when you say Jehovah, you add that V. So we have Jove, we have Jupiter, which really means Jah is the father. You understand? Because they worship Jupiter as Jah the father. Speaking about the Romans, the Greeks, and, and the other Gentiles. And also, Baal refers to the sun. So who are the sun worshipers? Those who need a tan are the sun worshipers. You understand? And you see them every year, you know, going down to the beach and worshiping the sun. Yovas, and that's a whole other aspect there. But getting into Baal or Baal, in order to make this pimp and pastor preacher connection, Right? A generic term. It's a generic term for God. A generic term for God. A basic term for God. Like when people say God today. People say, you believe in God? Anybody says, yes, I believe in God. But which God? There's many different gods. Even the Bible says there's many different gods. You know, so which God? What's his name as Moses requested and asked? So it's a generic term for God in many of the Syro, the Syrio, um, Arabian 
languages, the Syrian Arabian languages. Now, there's even more behind that. Who are the Syrians? And then what is the modern day Assyria up to? Assyria is in the news a lot nowadays, right? Um, the Arabian, the Arabian Peninsula, the Arab world. What does this Arab spring? How does this connect with the bigger picture? that is really going on in this particular dispensation and time. But Baal was the chief male deity of the Phoenicians and Canaanites, as Ashtoreth was their principal female deity, according to Judges, according to the book of Judges, um, Judges uh, 2 and uh, 13, 2 and 13. Let's let's see if we can bring up a graphic. We don't want to be too graphic, but let's see if we can bring up a um, a graphic. I don't know if we have the the Nini Minaj, Nicki Minaj that 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 image. We should have that somewhere. We'll wait till that comes up and bring that up because these are the modern types. You know, when they say so and so is a type like. A, so and so is like that kind of type, like they're that type. They're like this type, you know. We use this kind of thing today with idols. You Notice know, certain singers, performers, you you liken them, put them in a category as another type. When carried to the extreme, this is where we get this, um, you know, where we get this uh, uh, idolatry. You know, saying where we get this particular idolatry from today. So we have, there's a male type and there's a female type. You understand? The male type. And notice how the media plays to this a lot too. You understand? Because it goes to such a, a central programming, yeah, ancient programming, which the ancient mythologies kind of was pointing the finger at. You understand? That's why they tell you don't, don't look there. Because if you look there and understood it, you understand, in its scientific application, psychological and all the other ologies, you begin to recognize, wow, it's the same thing people are doing today. In fact, it's, it's what makes the media, you understand, the media and, and, and the system, in a sense, work so effectively because they can tap in to that, um, as Freud said, uh, subconscious uh, desires, Right, their worship or the worship of Baal was directed to Jovis or Jupiter or the sun as the guardian and giver of good fortune, Fortuna. And fortune, Fortuna, was a god, you know, like to say, fortune favors the brave. That saying was actually one of the sayings in ancient, in ancient um, pagan and, and, and false god worship. You know, fortune favors the brave, but fortune now, Fortuna in the Hebrew is God, God, not, Gad, not God, but Gad, the name Gad properly pronounced is God, and Bamarinya we have the Gud or the Cherak, so you can see, you know, even the ancients overstood that, but among the, the northerners or the Europeans, you understand, this was their good fortune, prosperity, and abundance. Now, notice the link between that and so-called Balaam or Balaam. You understand? Balaam. So what is that again? That is, he was the guardian, you know, the preacher, the pastor. He's like looked at the guardian. You people don't, who are not really even really truly spiritual in the, in, the, in the really just sense, but are kind of spiritual in the really ghost sense. You understand? They know to go to the pastor or preacher, you know, at those times, you know, because he's the, he's the guardian. He's the giver of good fortune. That, why do you think he's holding up this cross right here? Magic wand. Why? Why rich Negro right here? That's what it says up here. Rich Negro up there. Why do you think he's holding that cross up here? You know what I'm saying? Cause that's that's the good fortune. You understand? You see how it's all blinged out, it's all studied. That's the prosperity, right? That's the prosperity. That's the abundance. Now, metaphysically, we're gonna get to the metaphysical level of this because it's important for us to touch on the metaphysical level of this. That Baal. Baal means Lord, and it was the besetting sin. It was the sin that they just couldn't get away from this. It's like today in today's society. This is so overwhelmed. This pimp culture has so overwhelmed the lost sheep that even though many people know it's wrong and something is, is, doesn't sit right with it, even if they're involved in it at whatever point they're involved in, it almost seems like it seems so natural. It seems so natural, you understand, because the unnatural, according to the true natural order of Jah, is what has been practiced for so long. 
right, um, of the ancient Hebrews to apply this title to things formed instead of the formless. I thought that was interesting. That they say right here in the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary that Baal means Lord, and it was the besetting sin of the ancient Hebrews to apply this title. So Baal is a title, like Lord, Master, you know what I'm saying? Um, to apply this title to things formed, to form things, to worship visible things. Like people talk about seeing is believing. And these people will be like, you go to church? Are you Christian? Yeah, I'm Christian. I believe in the Lord. But seeing is believing. You know but the Bible teaches actually um, the opposite. We walk by faith, not by sight. Not by the outer, the exoteric, but by the esoteric, by the inner man. It's the spirit in our inner man. That's what we found interesting with uh, Creflo Dollar. He seemed to be maybe going through some sort of, um, I don't know, if, I can't say, I'm not going to say repentance or nothing like that, but he, he's, he's, he's like um, saying, I, you know, like he haven't taught people certain things that he should have, and now he's seeing this, and now he's coming out, and oh, everybody's going to be angry at him, so forth and so on, because he knew this, but, but he, he didn't want to come out with it. Almost like, you know, like he's trying to change his way. As, I'm not saying he is, but it's just kind of interesting if you check out some of the more recent things since his daughter incident, you know seems like he's, he's, he's trying to right his way. But look at Balaam. Look at Balaam. Look at Balaam. Wasn't Balaam in the same sort of situation? Balaam was riding the donkey, right? Balaam is like the preacher, the pastor of the counterfeit white Jesus doctrine, right? He's riding that donkey. He's riding democracy, right? The donkey can see the angel with the drawn sword. Notice, the donkey sees an angel, right? Get this. With a drawn sword. That's the, that's the really that's the really interesting part of it. That the donkey sees the angel right with the drawn sword and is trying to trying its best to get out of the way. But the rider, like the pastor, the preacher of this counterfeit this counterfeit doctrine, you know, this other Christ, this bar bar Jesus or Baal Baal Jesus, bar and Baal uh, etymology. Look that up. Both of the words are one and the same, basically. When you go back to the ancient roots, the bar, you know, something like bar Jesus is in the Bible. If you look up bar Jesus, he was a what? He was a um, he was a sorcerer, right? He was he, he was a sorcerer. Let's see if we can get that for you right here. Um, um, bar, right? Bar Jesus, right? And let's look at Bar Jesus right here, because some folks will think like, "Oh, you're just pulling that out of your hat." You understand? Um, we're not really, we're not wearing a hat. You understand? Um, anyway, um, uh, Bar Jesus, right? Bar Jesus, where's the, where's the bar? Here we go, Bar Jesus. Just so so you can see that, you know, so you can see that for yourself right there. Right? And what does it say? Let's read that together. And when they had gone through the isle to Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer. A what? A sorcerer. A false prophet. Ooh, a false prophet. A Jew. You know, it's the Anti-Defamation League. They're going, what? This, this is, you know, whose name was, what was his name? His name was Bar Jesus. Now down here in this one it says, uh, this new NET one, it says, when they crossed over the whole land as far as Paphos, they found a magician. So instead of a sorcerer, he was a magician. Now, now just, just, just click back on, let's click back on that, on, on Magic Wand. Look at that, Magic Wand. Look at that, Magic Wand. Bring him to the front. Magic Wand. Look at that, Magic Wand. He was a magician. He was a what? Sorcerer. Uh, don't sorcerers like oh look well, he got the earring and everything man he's all blinged out all kind of signs and symbols there what's this man that's some that's some craft right there and they're crafty right you know they're crafty very very crafty I mean in fact most of the pimps you know they they pride themselves in that craft that pimp stick the magic wand. Remember the Asherah pole, how it's a penile symbol, it's a phallic symbol. You get it? You get it. This is why it says that the practice at Baal Peor was lewd, was obscene. They don't want to tell you what it was, but, you know, you put a stripper's pole in, 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 your, in, your, in, your, in your house. 
in your bedroom. Anyway, a Jewish false prophet, he was a Jewish false prophet named Bar Jesus. So when we say there's another Jesus that people are being deceived by, and the Bible says that deceive the whole world, it shouldn't be any surprise that we have Cesare, Cesare, Cesare Borgia, who is the son of Pope Alexander the Sixth. Alexander the Sixth, and it's from his image that we get this so-called white European um, foreign national Jesus. The European, not that he's not the Hebrew national. Yeshua, because he has to be woolly here, the Ethiopian complexion at least, just according to the truth of his humanity. So you've seen Bar Jesus for yourself, right? Bar Jesus can also be Bow Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. It's very interesting, you know, um, that they can always, they know the name Adonai. They don't call him Adonai because they're not worshiping Adonai. And that works for me. If you look in the Masonic works like Albert Pike, they tell you that they worship Lucifer and that Adonai, you understand, is the bad one. Adonai is the one they're against. Adonai is the one they're fighting against. But they have no problem put, putting this picture of Jesus in front of you because it's not the Jesus you think it is. It's not the one according to the word and the spirit and the truth. But metaphysically speaking, speaking about these are the things formed instead of the formless. They're not in the spirit of the word, you know what I'm saying? But they're in the image of the beast. This tendency is still pre uh, prevalent, and not merely among the Hebrews. No, it's not. Remember that the, the role of the Hebrews, the lost black sheep, both then and now, was to be a light of the truth of God and Christ, of John. You understand? But instead, what are they seducing the whole world in, in this pimp culture? Notice that. The hip-hop and the pimp culture, when black people do it, it goes around the world universally. So that means that when we look at black folks and our situation, say, why, 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 why? This is why, 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 why? When you understand the big picture, it makes a lot of sense. You understand it makes a, a whole lot of sense why what's going on in, among black people today in, in the valley of the dry bones, in this, in this valley of the shadow of death that we're living here in the wilderness of the Americas is all about the black-on-black -black crime. All of that is explainable. It should be your preacher or your pastor that tells you about this. He should be able to see this in the Word. It's very clear, and we're using a lot of reference and sources that are out there that they use or they claim to use. But Christ says, observe what they observe, but don't do after their works. So we're seeking to be faithful and true to that. So it's not just among the Hebrews, which means that somehow that it didn't stop. The Hebrews were supposed to stop it. Remember, they were supposed to cut off the, 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 the altars and smash their idols and images in the Old Testament days. They didn't do it then. Instead, they turned their backs on the God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. They turned their backs on Yahweh. They turned their backs on Jehovah, if you please. And they went after this Balaam, Baal, you understand, and the false gods and goddesses. And these are the same things that people are doing today. On one hand, you have the pimp, you understand, as the so-called male um, symbology. And then you have, okay, here we go. Here we go. We can show you the female. This is the female counterpart. This is why when you do any research on the Illuminati or whatnot like that, you know, they always talk about sex magic. Sex magic. Why do you talk about sex magic? <laughs> what kind of sex magic? I mean, I mean, the stripper pole is sex magic. But, but see, some of y'all don't get that. You understand? Because you're really smart. You know, you're too smart to really get that. That's all sex magic right there. You know, this, um, even the money, you know, what's go what goes on with the money, putting the money in all the cracks. That's why it calls Lord of the opening. The Lord of what opening? Yeah, whatever opening that you are worshipping. You understand? In that whole false, you understand the false God. Now, behind these false gods and practices, there are evil spirits. They are very evil. And when you, and when you go into this, knowingly or unknowingly, you open a door, especially not being born again. You understand? Even born again folks can, can, can stumble, you understand? But if they truly you understand, are, are one with the Lord. Remember it says that when one is joined to the Lord, they are one spirit. Then his spirit gives us the grace to overcome that to, and, not, and not to be overcome by it. 
You know what I'm saying? But you have to recognize. You have to recognize and be truthful and not try to make no excuse about it. What holds a lot of people in their hot yacht in their sin is they're making some excuse. They're blaming somebody. They're finding some other way. And, you know, they tell us with, with addictions in the world today, they say that if somebody has some addiction, the only way you can get them help, you know, the only way to help will work for them is if they would admit. You understand? But the lost sheep or the lost black people do not want to admit. You know what I'm saying? But let's continue with Baal here. We just wanted to show you the counterpart right there and the Lord of the Opening. That's a very interesting one, ain't that? Lord of the Opening. You know what I'm saying? Um, all concepts of God are less than universal. That, 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 uh, all, concepts, all concepts of God as less than. All concepts of Jah, of, of, of the Creator, of the true blameless Creator, the, the true God, you understand, as less than universal mind, it said according to this metaphysical Bible dictionary, are Baal. Or we can say it in biblical terms. All concepts of God that are less than spirit and truth, those two witnesses, the Ma'at, you understand, that are less than that are Baal, are Baal worship. So if you have any concept of God, you understand, that is less than, and people play around with that a whole lot. We worship you. You are like our God, and they do that 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 that, that um um worship pose. You know that worship movement, wave it like you know like the Alibaba movies and stuff like that, and think, oh, I'm just Joe King. Okay, you're Joe King. All right, who's Joe King? What is your dominion? Hell. You know what I'm saying? Those who believe in a personal God, I found this interesting too. Those who believe in a personal God are Baal worshippers. Now, what do they tell us over and over and over again? That you have to take Jesus, remember who they're speaking about, bar Jesus. You have to take bar Jesus, bow Jesus, right, as your what? As your personal Lord and Savior, like your personal God. You have to take this personally. So what does that do? That breaks down communities. Not he is our Lord, but is he's my, my own personal Lord. You know what I'm saying? And they, they don't do this in the world so much. They do this in the church. You know what I'm saying? In the church. I can see it if you're in the world and you're speaking to a heathen or sheathen. You know what I'm saying? But they do this in the church. So it says right here that all who believe in a personal God are bail worshipers. They have bailed out. But in the world, they are ballers. You know what I'm saying? In the world, they are ballers. Ballers, right? Because they make an image of that which is, quote, without body, parts, or passions. They make an image. They have, to, they have to put it in some form in order to get the idea. They have to see it in a form. Therefore, they are not able to see and receive the formless. You understand? The formless, the, the essence, the essential, the spirit of the matter, right? They should learn to go back of the realm of things. We're also are caught up in this false god worship. If they really want to come out of this, they have to look behind, you know what I'm saying, behind the realm of things. Almost like they have to be able to see the code in the matrix, the, the word of God on this reality, right? That they may come in touch with God. They have to come in touch with God by coming in touch with the word of God by hearing, right? By hearing that word. Remember what Christ says? Um, that hearing they hear, but they do not understand, and seeing they see, but do not perceive. So first we have to hear the word. Faith comes by what? The amen comes by what? By hearing, and the hearing by the word of God, right? By the oracles of God, the kalata ekeziabihir, who is menfes, who is spirit. You understand? And who is mind, or the mind of Christos, the mind of Yeshua, who is cause. He is the cause. He is the omnipresence, or the all presence, right? Now, Baal worship, on the other hand, was a form of so-called nature worship. It was a form of nature worship. Now, this is not to say that nature is bad or anything like a lot of people we be talking about when they come out against, you know, the, the bail form of nature worship. You know what I'm saying? But it's nature worship apart from the true and living God, the true and living God and Father, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's outside of his word. 
right? So so it's it's a systemic anomaly in their in their programming. You understand? Um, all people who study materiality, if you study materiality and seek to find in it the source of existence, like the, all the scientists and the evolutionists and and the the monkey chimp god, um, 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 what you call it, uh, the Mo Darwinism and all of that it was racist, very racist too. That was something about that people don't want to talk about that. But all who study materiality, as they did in the early 19th century, and seek to find in it the source of existence through the material, what are they doing? They are sacrificing, right, to Baal. Now it's interesting in the old Baal worship, they would sacrifice sometimes even children. You understand? Or like all the abortions and everything is another another element of that. You understand? Um, they would sacrifice children or they would cut certain animals like the witch doctor or whatnot. will cut it open like the augura. The augura, like an inauguration. Auguries is all about the bird ritual where they'll take the bird and they'll cut it open and look at its entrails. You understand? And then by, by looking at that, they can tell what the reality so-called is about and what the future is going to be like. Well, now people don't do it like that, but what they basically do you understand, to study materiality and then try to look in the materials, the things that they're studying, right, to find the source of existence, they are sacrificing to Baal or to Baal. This is strictly intellectual. Those who try to take this on a strictly intellectual level, that's why the Bible says that knowledge puffs up. You understand that knowledge, just knowledge alone, in that sense, puffs up. So they have a lot of intellect, you understand, but no spirituality according to the word of God in Christ, all right? But there are those on the soul plane, what is that, the psychical plane, who think that they are spiritual. Now, this, this, this in itself could be a whole teaching, many of these points right here in the, of themselves. But this point right here is, is particularly interesting, that there are those who are on the soul plane. They're on the soul plane, feeling. They got, you know, feeling. They move with those vibes, like, you know, I like to feel out somewhere. I like to, you know, they're like, they're like psychical. You understand? Psychical. But on a certain level, it becomes cyclical and cyclical, too. But on the soul plane, they think that they are spiritual. But they think, because they are psychical, they think it's spiritual. They don't know the difference between the, the, the spirit and the soul. I mean, it's very, very, it's extremely interesting. And study of the study of the scriptures, especially in the in the Greek, you understand, for those who have access to that, um, or in the Hebrew, you understand, similar to the Ethiopic and the Royal Amharic, shows that distinction between the, you know, between the spirit, what the spirit is, from what the soul is. And I find it so interesting that some of the so-called really intellectual people, college people, even even these psychiatrists and the rest, they, they don't even understand the difference between the two. They really don't. They, they actually they define one by the other and the other by the one. You understand? Um, so they don't know what they say or what they affirm, really. You understand? But they are intellectual, no doubt. You understand? So they have some knowledge and they can use words and stuff on a certain level. But if you really look at what they are uh, the, uh, reportedly um, um, describing, you could tell if you once you know, but you have to know the original. Like you can't tell a counterfeit um, dollar bill if you've never seen an original, or if you don't have an original to to compare it with. You know, if you get a bunch of counterfeits, you know, if somebody put a real dollar, then you never seen a real one. You can't really tell what the counterfeit really is because you have nothing. You have no standard. This is where it says that we are guided in that sense by religion on a certain level by the by the by the true faith and the true teachings and the true doctrine that guides us in our spiritual in our spiritual walk. So they think they are spiritual, those on the soul plane. Because they feel <laughs> because of their feeling. It's like at the club. You go to a club to get a feeling. It's like an ambience, right? You know, when you go to a nightclub, it's like the atmosphere, something about and you know, I and I used to, I, I went to a lot of kind of clubs, all kind of places, and you know, I think about it now, I'm like, wow, like even Paradise Garage back in the days, and you know, that was like, it was like a temple, now that I know, I didn't really know it, but you knew some things you didn't, you didn't feel, you understand, to deal with, so you didn't deal with, but you know what other folks were doing, because they feel the throb, they feel the throb, or the vibration of nature, you know, those who, who get like an adrenaline high, adrenaline junkies. Right, bungee jumpers. And they join in all her moods. 
Can't you just feel the tree is talking to me, you know, is saying to me right now that you are a person, you are a guide or something? You know, they've been going through all this psycho babble, you know what I'm saying, psychological Babylon. They are closely allied to the whirling dervish, you know, the whirling dervishes who wear the red fezzes and they spin around, you know, almost like dancers dancing with themselves and dissipate their soul substance. They dissipate it. You know, it is possible. This is why you, you should not love materiality. Because even, even saying these words, you've got to be very, very careful about it. Because, you see, by saying the word, you direct energy, spiritual energy, psychical energy. You know, like if somebody says, like, oh, I love, I just love this thing here. I love it so much. They are actually dissipating their psychical energy upon it. This is why so many folks are weak. And I want to say weak, I mean sickly and, and are vulnerable and some go crazy because they have dispersed their psychical energy. You know, they put a little, love, a, a, a little bit of their love on this thing. So their, their um, um, life force, imagine if somebody took out their life force, cut a little, a little portion of it, you understand, like 10%. And put it on this thing. So that means they have 90% now. And then they take another 10% and put on that thing. And they take another 10% and put on these things. This is why when somebody kind of like, like love material things, and that material thing is destroyed even accidentally by somebody, somebody wants to kill somebody. That's where you get that vibe to kill somebody. You know what I'm saying? You are participating in Baal worship, whether you're doing it so-called consciously or not. Well, you say, well, I didn't know. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. You know, that's why the Torah, the law is our schoolmaster until we, we grow up to Christ, until we become mature in this. And so we, they dissipate their soul substance in the various forces of nature, the various forces of nature and, and the material things as well. I'm adding that to, to, to this right here. It says, with which they are in love. The key thing is love. The key thing is love. And you got to remind me to touch on the word love in the Ethiopic and what the Ethiopic and the Royal Heart teaches about love and the use of the word love. It's, it's very, very, it's very, very spiritual. It's very interesting. You know, because after all, the Ethiopian civilization, you understand, is, is, is one of the oldest civilizations in the world. But they don't want to tell you that because that, that would be too African. You understand? That would be too black. You understand? And remember, the whole game is, is, is different. You know, the game is deception. So they want to keep you away from that. Such persons who do away with this Baal worship and call upon the life fire of the spirit, calling upon the life fire fire of the spirit, which is the word of God. I saw, what was that? Um, Jeremiah chapter 20. Jeremiah chapter 20. I, I caught this on, 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 on the other part of the search. Jeremiah chapter 20. Let's go here. There's a word here for us in Jeremiah chapter 20 about this life fire. So those who do away with it, because we're not just here to point this out to you um, about how to overcome it. You understand how to, the world don't want you to know these things. You understand, and if enough people really recognize and, 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 and act on this and are freed up, you understand, it's going to be very evident and manifest. You understand, very evident and manifest. But, you know, we can say whatever we, we say right now, and they expect that they've programmed you so well, that you've been programmed so well, you're so, you're so indebted. You understand? You're so indebted in debt. Uh, you know? See, Yeshua cancels out all of those debts. You can't just run away from it in your ego. You know? Like, you know, do it with, with, with self-will. But self-will is, 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 is a, limit, a, limit, a limited supply of energy. You're not tapping into the source. You're, you're not tapping into the source. Verse 9, Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 9 then I said, then Aramaeus, Aramaeus said, I will make, I will not make, excuse me, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in mine heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay, or I could not. I could not, like, I, I, I couldn't hold it. Jeremiah is saying that 
John's word, you understand? It's like when David says, um, and when I muse, when I muse, that when I meditated on it, when you meditate on some things, the fire burns. But he didn't want to say nothing. But after a while, he had to speak. You understand? He had to speak because it's so important, you understand, recognizing that testimony, recognizing speaking, you understand, speaking is very, very important, that opening, in the sense of the mouth, to speak the word. And we've been opening up our mouths in ignorance, speaking a lot of word, wrong word, you know what I'm saying, speaking doubt, speaking fear, mm -hmm. speaking weakness, you know what I'm saying? You know, it's like what you hear the Negroes always doing to each other, what our lost people doing, like, you ain't, you're never going to be nothing. You ever never gonna be nothing. You ain't nothing. Oh, who you think you? You know, and and you'd be surprised the damage that does. And some of us might have been on the receiving end. Some of us may have been on the giving end. You understand? But the way out in Yeshua HaMoshiach is one and the same. <laughs> you know, the way out is still one and the same. You overs. Um, and 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 who can resist? An invitation so full of compassion as the as the invitation of our Black Lord and Savior. You understand Yeshua HaMoshiach. So, such people or persons, right, who seek to, who, who must do away with this bow worship, right, and they must call upon the life force of the Spirit, of the Holy Spirit, not the Holy Ghost, not the Ghost. That's, that's an error. That's an error programming. You know, that's an error programming that was left there so that they would have another so those who are in the bar Jesus would have their way. You understand? But in truth, the Holy Ghost should be Holy Spirit, not Holy Ghost. I mean, that's a very important thing right there. And like the Negro black churches do this out of so-called tradition, but it, they, 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 it's more than that. It's a tradition that makes the word of God of no effect. You understand? And that's Christ speaking right there. Right? So must call upon the life fire of the Spirit to do what? To consume, to bun it. So this is what Rastafari and I say, fire bun. But but see, a lot of folks been fire bunning things in ignorance. You know what I'm saying? They don't understand what kind of fire. What is the fire? You know what I'm saying? What is the fire? And if they don't have the word of God in their heart and they're fire burning anything, you're a fool. You're a fool. You're really burning down your your own house. You're burning yourself. You know what I'm saying? You're burning yourself. Right, but we must call upon the life fire of the Holy Spirit, of the Spirit to consume every material phase of sacrifice. Every material phase of sacrifice. In other words, to consume all those things that we have done, to burn up, in that sense, all those debts. You'll know send all those indentations and indentations to Satan, to, to, to burn up all of that. Now, Balaam or, or Balaam, Balaam, Speaking of all the bowels, you know, it was all the pimps or those in the pimp consciousness, not necessarily as as uh, vainglorious as 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 rich Negro right here. You understand? It could be more subtle. You understand? Um, Balaam and Asheroth or Asheroth, right? They represent nature in its various sensuous or sensuous aspects. Nature. And it's very sensuous aspects, or you know, the natural man. What the Bible says in the New Testament, in the Burt Hadasha or the Hadis Kidan, as as um, the natural man. Deuteronomy uh, says this right here, four nineteen and seventeen and three. It says, "All the hosts of heaven, all the hosts of heaven." are the sun, moon, and stars, and the 12 signs of the zodiac. So, so what, what, what does the sun, moon, and stars, what are they really there for? First thing we have to define, what are they really there for? Well, according to uh, Genesis, the beginning of the book, chapter 1, verse 14, the sun, the moon, the stars are for signs and seasons, days, and years. So basically that is what? That is timekeeping. Right, timekeeping. You understand? The Bible teaches us to redeem the time because the days are kufu, the days are evil. So now Balaam and Asheroth, right, are connected now with this host of heaven, and it's connected with how you spend your time. Basically, how do you spend your time? You understand? Do you know what time it is? 
and how do you spend this time? So when we fall into the evils, right, and if we have fallen into these evils, or if one has fallen into evils, listen to this very carefully, of Manasseh. Manasseh means forgetting. He was the brother of um, the brother of, uh, of, of Ephraim, and the, they were both the sons of um, Joseph, Yosef, and Asenat, his Egyptian wife, who was the daughter of the high priest. They were Yahwehs in Egypt, yes, they were Yahwehs. They overstood the Amen as the pre-incarnate Yeshua, the pre-incarnate Christos, or Karas. All right? Manasseh, chapter 2, um, I mean, Second uh, Chronicles, excuse me, Manasseh, according to Second Chronicles, um, not chronic, Chronicles 33, 1 to 13. We think that the planets and the stars rule over us. That's what they like you to be like, Eve, that the planets and the stars rule over you. And that it is necessary to pay them a certain degree of homage or worship, worship because of their influence. You know, what's the influence of this sign and that sign and, and such and such and such, right? Well, some people in this day have great faith. And see, what makes that work is their faith. They think it's because of this and that, but really what makes it seem to work to a certain extent is their great faith. They have great faith in their ruling planets. That means they're gods, right? And think, they think about this a whole lot, right? As a man thinketh in his heart, what? So is, is he or she, you understand, for that matter, generically speaking, that they are bound to certain traits. I can't help myself. I'm a, I'm a Capricorn. I can't help myself. I'm Gemini. You understand? I'm Scorpio. I'm Sagittarius. You know what I mean? You know, whatever, whatever, whatever. If I miss your sign, then the other eight signs, you know who you are. You know what I'm saying? And you know what people say or what you might have said. You think you're bound to the certain traits of character. You understand? Because they were born. You're born that. I was born <laughs> that way, right? When they, you know, when um, those side the real, their side the real bodies, were in the ascendancy. So when they're side the real, if you study this, you know what that means. But in, we're in the ascendancy. Well, this is my trait. I can't help it. You're stuck. You're stuck. So if somebody else has a knowledge of that and they're telling you about it, it's like they become like your priest in a sense, right? They are forgetful. They're forgetful of the God power. They're forgetful of Jah's power. And they're forgetful of Jah. All nations that forget Jah are turned into what? Hell. Why do you think hell is taking over the ghetto and, 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 and black America? I mean, in some very serious ways. We're in the valley of the shadow of death, the valley of the dry bones. They are forgetful of Jah's power within them. They don't know Jah within them. You know what I'm saying? And so are brought into condemnation. This is why I said at the very outset that, listen, I'm not here condemning. People always say, oh, well, who are you to judge? First of all, um, who are you to quote to me the Bible and you can't read it in the original language and you haven't studied and showed yourself approved to God as a workman and need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So what I'm going to do is shame you. I'm going to shame you. Like what the, in, the, in the New Testament says, prove those who are false apostles. You know what I'm You prove ones who say they were apostles or say they are Jews or whatever. You prove them false according to Revelation. You know that is that is also the work of the true Christ man, the true the true anointed. Those are the spirit of God. We're supposed to bring all of that into captivity. You understand to Christ. You understand? Yes, bring all that into into slavery if you want to call it captivity. You understand? Bring it under. You understand? Under under the church, the true church. You understand? Under the feet of Christ. You understand? To the feet of Christ, and if that means condemnation, so be it. But it's not us. It's the word. You understand? It's his word. Even Christ said, you know, he doesn't judge anyone. It's that word. It's the word that judges one. When they hear it, they feel guilty. And they say, oh, you're making me feel guilty. Oh, this is hate speech or this is that. But no, it's their own thoughts. It's your own conscience. And what happens is that either the drugs or certain type of lifestyles or or a certain type of spirituality, so-called, makes people forget these things, you know? But what it does is burn out their conscience, so so they don't feel any way about it. You know, understand? It's like when you meet a psychopath, you understand, who's done the the, the the most dastardly deeds, 
you know, murder, kill, rape, mayhem, all the works of Satan, and you're saying, why did you do this? And, they, and they're smiling and feeling like, hey, they're looking you straight in the eye and they're being very quite logical, they're very intellectual and all of that. And you're like, I can't, I can't believe that this person doesn't recognize what they did. They have no conscience about it. They feel no guilt about it. You hear know, this? Just like those who took our nine people into captivity. That's why they don't want to hear no more about it. You know, they don't want to hear about it. Some of them, their conscience already burnt out on it. But judgment will be. Um... The Manasseh, the final part of this is the Manasseh mentality. The Manasseh mentality, what is the forgetfulness mentality? What is the forgetful mentality? Now, it's interesting if you study um, being forgetful of, of all of Jah's blessing and forgetful of Jah causes one to be also a hypocrite to Jah. It's just like when somebody's forgetful, you do things for them, and then later on, they're treating you some way. You'd be like, hey, why are you treating me that way? I was always there for you. I was such and such. And they were like, when you did anything for me? And you'd be like, what? You, you, you hypocrite. Because what are they doing? They are forgetting. They are forgetful. So the, so the Manasseh mentality also leads to that hypocrisy. And especially that hypocrisy when we see it in the places such as the church. You understand that hypocrisy that we see that's going on among the lost sheep, the Hebrew or the so-called um, Negro, and among our so-called leaders, our spiritual leaders. They say, oh, you're not going to put this one at our door. John's going to put it on your head. You understand? You know, so you better, you better, you know, answer when the door knock, when John knock on the door. You understand? <laughs> the Manasseh mentality usually goes from one step of, Balaam worship to another. So, so it goes from degree to degree. So we have to understand how things get bad or worse. Like people, you know, they, they first were doing, you know, maybe um, were drinking, you understand? Maybe they're smoking cigarettes and they may get a blunt, you know what I mean? And then they get some old E, you understand? And then after a while, maybe somebody get a little cocaine. They can't get the cocaine. It's too expensive. They get the crack, you know. And things go from, from bad to worse, and, and then eventually in the terminus, they end up in the hearse, right? So the Manasseh mentality usually goes from one step of Balaam worship, worshiping one, one thing as a lord or a master or owner or a ruler to worshiping something else, as having that ruling influence over your life and over your so-called destiny, right? Um, the Manasseh mentality usually goes from one step of Balaam worship to another until, until, it exhausts them all until all these are exhausted, you know. And I don't know if you ever got there or if you're there now when one gets to that burnout. You get to that point of burnout. You know what I'm saying? When ones get really burnt out. You know what I'm saying? Of living certain and lives, so forth and so on. And you see, see this happen, even the pimp and the prostitute. And you see some things happen out there, even with the drug addict, the meth addicted person. You see them get burnt out. You understand? Luck, chance. Sorcery, familiar spirits, wizardry are some of the avenues through which the Manasseh or the forgetful mind attempts to regulate its life. I got to look at my horoscope before I begin my day, see what I, what I can do and what I can't do. You understand? And you, you, you didn't even meet the person right in the horoscope, but you trust them. You have faith in them. You never doubt. Say, oh, I don't know if this is correct. No, how can you? Because that person is the is the expert. They're the priests of this particular religion, right? Yeah. Wrong. Astrology, palmistry, uh, the guidance of spirits, mesmerism, um, hypnotism are some of the many modern forms. These are the modern. These are kind of like religious denominations in the modern world sense. Um, these are modern forms of the denial, denial of God. In other words, they deny. Um, denial of service to God. They, they deny service. You know, like in the computer, where you get denial of access, denial of service. You know what I'm saying? They deny service to God. They deny entry of God's word. When they hear one speaking of God or speaking of the Bible or the scriptures or our blessed Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they, 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 they turn away. They turn off from that. They don't want no part, you know what I'm saying, of, of so-called true religion. You understand? But false stuff, they can go along with that. That's why they bring clowns into the church. You know, they bring circuses into the church, all kind of tricksters, magicians. They're going to bring magicians in there, too. You understand? Right there on, on, in, in, in the bullpit or the pulpit. 
or whatever they call that, that, that altar area, that altar state area. Now, indulged in, when, when people indulge in this for a time, you know, when they've been doing this for a while, what happens? They leave the negative mind, the negative mind. See, see first it begins off with maybe a negative thought. But when they indulge in that negative thought, it gets bigger. It starts to infect other programs. It, it, it infects other areas of their mind or of their life, right? And so then their mind becomes qualitatively a negative mind. You know what I'm saying? Those folks are always negative, always doubtful, always phobic, always fearful. You understand? Know we call them heavily burdened souls, right? Heavily burdened souls. And they really need to begin, uh, you know, a good place to begin is with repentance. You understand? Know it's to repent. You understand? Know to learn what that means. A good psalm, actually, is Psalm 51. You understand? Know to, to, to meditate, you understand, know upon that. But one has to come to the point in their life, you know what I mean, where they recognize there's a problem. And then they have to seek. You understand? Know they have to ask, seek, and to knock spiritually speaking, on that door. But when, 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 when in the negative state, uh, the lost state, when you, when you indulge in this for a time, this manasseh mentality, this forgetful mentality for a time, one get led into a, a, a deeper and deeper level of the negative mind, a deeper and deeper level of bondage. This is why we talk about the bondage in ancient Egypt was, a, was more of a spiritual bondage. It's like today, people are in bondage in spiritual Egypt. You know what I'm saying? The black churchism and black America is like a spiritual Egypt. I mean, look right there in D.C. you got the obelisk right there. You have these black people that have been there ever since, um, ever since uh, the emancipation. You know what I'm saying? And it's the poorest, one of the poorest areas. You understand? In the world, you understand, for real. It's, some parts of Africa are much better off. I mean, they won't tell you this because if, you know, Negroes got that way from that and, and really saw a better possibility on the other side, they will become Hebrew and cross over. But they want to keep that from you. They want to keep you in that bondage, in a deep, deep, deep dungeon.